Ah yes, Deadpool 3. The next film in the ever-growing meme of the MCU is dead and the MCU is back. Is it possible that after this movie the MCU is finally back to its glory days before the dreaded DEI hires took over? No, not even close. Hate to be that guy folks, but the MCU is still dead and this movie makes it even deader. The movie starts off in a very cathartic way. Deadpool digging up the corpse of Wolverine from the movie Logan, a common theme of this movie. It's centered around the concept that the past is better than anything we have now, and it's apparent from the cameos and even the soundtrack. Deadpool is having a heart-to-heart -heart with Logan Skeleton when the TVA shows up and we have a very well choreographed fight scene. And for a moment, I felt something deep inside my chest. Hope. Hope for the MCU, that maybe these terrible movies and shows were just a small blip, and we are finally getting back to good, solid content again. But my hopes were dashed with a quick cut to the next scene, Deadpool trying to convince Happy Hogan to let him join the Avengers. Why is he talking to Happy Hogan and not, I don't know, an actual Avenger? Because it's funny, shut up and consume it. Deadpool is in the middle of a midlife crisis at the moment, feeling inadequate and longing for purpose. What the f*** am I watching here? This is what we're watching. This is the plot. Deadpool, a mercenary who for two movies spent his time taking down villains and doing good, is now sad because he doesn't have anything to do. So then it cuts to six years later, and he's a used car salesman. You're friends with literally the X-Men. You're a mercenary. Remember in the second movie that long montage in the beginning of him taking down mass loads of criminals? Do that. That's purpose. That's helping people. Oh, and uh, he and Vanessa broke up, which might be the most unbelievable part of the movie for me. You're telling me that he saved her by breaking the space-time continuum, and then they broke up over a simple fight. This isn't like Han and Leia breaking up because their son became corrupted by the dark side and it ruined their marriage. Deadpool broke the laws of reality to save Vanessa. Figure it out. Deadpool then has a surprise birthday party with an endless stream of jokes about cocaine and how sad and depressed he is, but still keeping a smile on his face. Let me get this straight. You're not just on a first name basis, but you're on a you're coming to my surprise birthday party basis with the literal X-Men and you can't find a purpose. That they can't just... Find a way to put you into the group. Yes, 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 I remember in the previous movie and the one before that, there was a tug of war of morals with Colossus, but you're telling me that after all these years, they haven't figured it out? No Xavier line about stumbling and helping others in need? No, 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 no. It's just a cool bunch of laughs and cocaine jokes, and you know what? Let's just move on from that. But then the TVA shows up, and they kidnap Deadpool. And this is where the movie takes a collective shit on itself. We meet Mr. Paradox, played by my most hated actor in all of Hollywood, Matthew McFadden, the most boring and blandest human being to have ever graced us with his presence. Go watch Death at a Funeral, the British one, and then watch the black one with Chris Rock. Chris Rock is Jack f Nicholson compared to Matthew McFadden, but I digress. Back to the movie. So Mr. Paradox explains to Wade what exactly the TVA does, and Wade makes a joke about the amount of exposition that's being given in a threequel. So, you're not that clever, movie writers, because you're making fun of your own product. Imagine for a second that you're writing a story, and there's a character in it whose sole purpose is to point out the poorly written mistakes that you've made to turn it into a joke. But it's okay, we'll just make a joke out of it, and no one will think differently of it. Moving on. Wade thinks that he's here because he used Cable's device in the second movie to save Vanessa and others, which makes a lot of sense. Because the TVA, by and large, is beholden to the sacred timeline of events and tries to stop anyone from upsetting the flow of time. 
But no, 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 no. Mr. Paradox quickly informs us that, no, that has nothing to do with that. So, in your own universe, Marvel, you are now disregarding the rules set forth by you guys for an organization that you created. The MCU is dead, people. It's not coming back for a very long time. Then Mr. Paradox informs Wade that he has been chosen, that he's special, that he alone can save the sacred timeline from extinction. This guy is going to save the entirety of the timeline. Okay, moving on. They make a few jokes about gratuitous cameos, which is again just point in front of themselves, but I guess if it's satire, you get a pass on bad writing, okay? Yes, the people on Facebook are telling me this movie is a 10 out of 10, get the f*** out of here. But in order to do this mission, Wade needs a new suit. So before he is given his mission, we go on a montage of him getting all these new upgrades to his suit while getting his ass spanked continuously. So now equipped with a new suit, new guns, and adamantium swords, Deadpool is ready to hear his assignment, but needs to quickly return home to tell his friends and family that he's going to be gone for a short amount of time, but no, 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 Mr. Paradox informs Wade that there will be no timeline to return back to. Apparently, Wade's timeline is deteriorating because Wolverine died in the movie Logan. He is called an Anchor Bean. And because he died, thus the universe is collapsing. First of all, what the f***? Wolverine wasn't killed in some kind of time dilation bull or something like that, though. This wasn't like Loki changing the course of time and the sacred timeline and creating chaos. Wolverine died how he was supposed to. It was literally predicted in the Wolverine movie that he was going to die with his heart in his hand and he died in Logan holding X-23's hand, essentially his heart. But please, if I'm mistaken here, if I'm mistaken that somehow the course of reality was changed, please let me know in great detail because I don't know what's going on in this or if I'm missing anything. But here's a great idea, Marvel. Maybe show us the universe dying Maybe just show it, I don't know, collapsing things here and there with reality or things vanishing. No, no, they did none of that. They did this with Multiverse of Madness. They were saying that, oh yes, variants being in different universes causes massive collapse or anything like that though. Which means that America Chavez's mothers, wherever they got yeeted into, are destroying that universe by being there. Does... Does this, does this sound like the MCU has any idea what's going on at this point, though? No. Hell no. It's still dead, folks. But back to the plot. So Logan dying was such a massive event in the sacred timeline that it's literally destroying the universe. This man, not Tony Stark or anyone else out there that could essentially upset the fabric of reality. Not Wanda or anything like that. Not even Doctor Strange. This man, Wolverine, was so important to the timeline that the timeline got him killed and then they're like, no, 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 there's a problem here. Okay. The man that died saving a few orphans, this was his big event that's literally killing the universe. Not immediately, as Mr. Paradox says, in a couple thousand years. But oh, no, 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 again, Mr. Paradox doesn't want to just sit back and watch it die. He wants to simply mercy kill it now. This is the plot, people. 10 out of 10, get the f*** out of here. So Mr. Paradox offers Deadpool a choice. Join the TVA or go back to your loved ones for the next 72 hours as he prepares to destroy the universe. This Deadpool is the man that he had to pluck from the universe and offer such a deal to. Ah, yes, because Matthew McFadden thought Deadpool was cool or special or the, the TVA liked him or something like that. Honestly, Curious George Boofest has a more solid plot than this movie. So Deadpool decides to F the deal, steal the timeline gadget, and try to find another Wolverine and bring him back over here, thus saving the universe from extinction. But then we get a rather fun and senseless montage of Deadpool going to the other Wolverine universes and seeing their variants, which are similar to those in the comic books. 
it's kind of cool and a nice reward for longtime Marvel fans. But overall, it's just filler at this point. We see a Wolverine strapped to a cross, we got a Wolverine with one hand, we see Patch Wolverine, we see Brown Suit Wolverine fighting the Hulk, and even Henry f Cavill shows up as Wolverine. And Deadpool even says, this feels right. And you know what? It does. Henry Cavill looks damn good as Wolverine, which means obviously they're gonna go in a different direction. But then at long last... Deadpool finds the perfect Wolverine. Is this the bravest and bestest of the Wolverines? No. This is sad, depressed, drunk Wolverine. And Deadpool explains to him of why I need to take you back with me. Why didn't he have a conversation with the other Wolverines in the montage? Oh, because they attacked him? You're, you're immortal, Deadpool. You couldn't just pull the claws out and tell Patch, Hey, I kinda need your help. Can you, um... Give me five seconds to explain what's going on. So that Wolverine passes out, and Deadpool says, Well, I guess you'll have to do. So Wolverine on the cross was too complicated to explain this to, but passed out, drunken, depressed Wolverine is what you're going with? F*** you, 10 out of 10, moving on. Deadpool shows up to TVA carrying the drunken Wolverine, who is wearing his iconic yellow suit underneath his clothes. Okay... That he's at a bar drinking himself to the point of passing out. Wearing the yellow suit underneath his clothes. Much later we get to that in the storyline of why he's depressed. Which makes me wonder, why is he wearing this suit as a constant reminder of his failure? So the idea is that Deadpool is going to replace dead Wolverine with this Wolverine. Thus saving his universe. And Mr. Paradox laughs at the fact that Deadpool brought the worst Wolverine of all the timelines. One that he let down his entire world. And as he's going off on this, the writers decide to undercut the moment by having Mr. Paradox eat a sandwich as he berates Deadpool. Wolverine stands up and Deadpool welcomes him to the MCU and says, You got in at a low point. Truer words have never been spoken. This movie might be one of the lowest points of the MCU. And Deadpool demands to speak to who's in charge about this, and then he quickly realizes by the silence in the room that Mr. Paradox is going off on his own. That he's uninforming his bosses, and he wants to just mercy kill universes that he believes that are dying. So he quickly prunes both of the men into the void. There a down Deadpool is picked up by Wolverine as he shoves his claws into him. At this point, does Wolverine know that Deadpool can regenerate? He has all these questions and has essentially given this man a mortal wound before he remotely explained anything that's going on. There we get a really awesome fight between these two immortals. It is everything that we want to see. And Deadpool even says, let's give the people what they want. Yes, this is what we want. Two iconic heroes beating the f***ing shit out of each other. It's perfectly choreographed. It does everything right. And we even get a lot of callbacks to previous movies, like the scene in Spider-Man 1 where Peter fights Flash Thompson. And the soundtrack is also amazing. Before Wolverine slices Deadpool's head off, he explains that I can fix your past. The TVA can go back in time and change everything. But the conversation is quickly cut short by Chris Evans who shows up to inform them that they're coming. And then we see a Mad Max style parade of vehicles driving towards them. The caravan circles the group and we see old villains from previous X-Men movies. Pyro, Sabretooth, and Toad and a few others. Then we get one of the biggest crowd explosions of the movie as Chris Evans yells flame on and flies into the air. It is such an awesome moment, especially for me, who was such a big fan of the original movies. Here is how long this fight scene lasts, okay? My timestamp for the flame on moment is at the 39 minute and 50 second mark. He flies through the air and shoots a fireball at Pyro who sucks out the entire flame. This started at the 40 minute mark exactly. And at the 40 minute and 13 second mark, Johnny Storm is sucked dry and lands crotch first on a pole. 10 out of 10, you.
And then somehow he lands on his neck twice and doesn't die. Okay, plot convenience. Moving on. Then we get another iconic fight. Sabretooth prepares to fight Wolverine. At the 40 minute and 36 second mark, Deadpool prepares Wolverine for the battle. At the 41 minute mark, the two men charge at each other. And I thought we were going to get a fight mirroring that of Wolverine Origins. Maybe even seeing Deadpool fight the other mutants in some kind of comedic fashion with a bunch of callbacks. No, 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 no. At the 41 minute and 2 second mark, the fight is over. Sabretooth gets his head chopped off, and Deadpool does a Furiosa reference, but I doubt anyone in the audience actually knew what that was because no one watched that movie. Toad turns on a giant magnet, and Wolverine and Deadpool are sucked onto it, and they pass out from a sentinel foot plot convenience coming at them. They wake up strapped to each other, and Johnny Storm is somehow alive and explains the plot. He explains that Alliance, and Deadpool says from Loki Season 1, is consuming people in the void. I don't really understand how that works, but screw it. I doubt they do as well. But luckily, there is a resistance that wants to team up with them and take down the bad guys. We then meet the main villain of this movie, Cassandra Nova, the twin sister of Charles Xavier, who has the powers to end Wolverine and Deadpool with the flick of a wrist, but chooses not to do it because of the plot. Deadpool then goes on a rant of what Johnny Storm said about Cassandra. It makes sense later on though, but he goes on saying how Johnny said she's an egotist and a massive rant and Johnny continuously pleads that he never said any of that stuff and Cassandra sucks his skin off his body with a blink of an eye. Then we get an explanation of why Cassandra is down here and the TVA and blah blah blah, who gives a sh Cassandra then enters Deadpool's mind and we get a brief retelling of his fight with Vanessa and why they broke up. But clearly it's not the whole truth because Deadpool points out that's not how it happened, so what's the point of that? Elias shows up and Wolverine and Deadpool escape on the Sentinel's leg, you know, the plot convenience from before, and don't get chased down by the giant smoke universe killing monster. Okay. Wolverine informs Deadpool that we need to find the Resistance. And then they meet the ugliest dog in human history, accompanied by Nicepool which is just Deadpool without a mask and flowing long locks, who is just constantly nice. Oh, also, he wields a pair of golden guns as essential to the plot later on, though. Nice Pool gives them a Honda Odyssey, which I imagine helped pay for most of the budget since they talk about it for so long. Wolverine and Deadpool go on a very long drive through the desert and end up in the woods somehow, and Deadpool makes small talk with Wolverine asking, if they can fix your world, what are you going to do next? And Wolverine stops the car and asks, What do you mean if? And he stabs Deadpool in the leg, telling him that you lied to me. And I know I shit on this movie thus far. But this scene right here may very well be worth the price of admission. Deadpool pulls out a photo and explains to Wolverine that everything in his world is in this picture. And he needs his help. Wolverine then goes on a massive rant about what a joke Deadpool is and how his life is utterly worthless. He even says, you can't even save a relationship you have with a stripper. And then goes on to say that God's best joke is that you can't die. A simple scene right there might be one of my favorite moments in the MCU post endgame. Deadpool then takes a few minutes of silence and replies with, I'm going to fight you now. And the two men have one of the best brawls in the MCU. Two immortals beating the sh** out of each other in a Honda Odyssey. Brutal, bloody, raw. No comedy in this scene at all. It is everything the fans want. And the two fight for what seems like hours and pass out from exhaustion. As a mysterious figure gets in the car and drives away to the home of the resistance. Convenient. Now, if I was to ask you on a scale from 1 to who gives a f and I tell you, Jennifer Garner is going to reprise her role as Elektra, how big of a move is that for you? The theater exploded. I doubt that most of the people, even know who the hell she is, saw the movie Daredevil, or even saw her standalone movie. But then Blade walks in and my pants tighten a little bit because I think Blade 2 was one of my favorite Marvel movies. And I think Wesley Snipes is one of my favorite actors, so it was cool to see him again in an iconic role. But then the creme de la creme walks in Channing Tatum as Gambit. 
with the worst accent in human history, which I don't know was intentional or was just Channing Tatum being a terrible actor. Oh, and then X-23 walks in and Deadpool explains to Logan what she meant to him, but clearly it doesn't really matter since he never saw her before, so who cares? Would he have said the same thing to Patch when X-23 walked into? Probably not. Then we get a quick emotional scene between Wolverine and 23 about what happened to him. It's kind of boring. The X-Men were killed when Wolverine was at a bar, and that was it. That is what makes this Wolverine, in the eyes of Matthew McFadden, the worst actor of all human history, the worst Wolverine of all time, because he got drunk at a bar and his friends got killed. Have they remotely heard of Old Man Logan where Mysterio made Wolverine think the X-Men were the villains and he killed them off one by one in brutal fashion? Oh, no, 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 they didn't bother to show those up. Oh, they didn't even say the Brotherhood showed up, though. They said the humans showed up. So the greatest assembly of X-Men of all time in the world were killed by a bunch of humans. What humans were they? That they could fight off the might of Storm, Cyclops, and Jean f***ing Grey. 10 out of 10 movie, f*** you. And then as the conversation's going on, Paradox calls Pyro and tells him he has to kill Cassandra and we have a deal and blah blah blah, who cares. And then the next day happens as a Honda Odyssey makes its way towards Cassandra's base, Blade pulls out a rocket launcher and they crash through. The plan is to get Juggernaut's helmet and put it on Cassandra, because then that'll stop her powers. Okay? Also, for some odd reason, Vinnie Jones doesn't play Juggernaut. I don't understand why he didn't want to do this. But then the fight happens. A hundred guns point at the heroes. A bunch of mutants and villains on the ground ready to fight the six heroes. And as I'm watching this, I'm wondering, why were these six assembled? They didn't decide to get, I don't know, Eric Bana or Edward Norton's Hulk? You have a hundred guns on you that are firing repeatedly and no one dies? This fight is essentially as you could possibly predict it's going to be. A lot of pretty lights jumping around, nothing remotely able to gush about. But for some odd reason, Deadpool and Wolverine leave the battle to go fight Cassandra, who is just toying with them for some odd reason. And then she goes inside Wolverine's head and tries to convince him to stay with her. That she can help heal his pain and make the voices stop. And then we get a little bit more clarity of what happened with Wolverine and why he's in this constant depressed mood. From what I gathered, and if I misheard this, please let me know in the comment section. Wolverine saw that all the X-Men were killed. So just like Anakin Skywalker, he went out there, found the people that did it, killed all of them, and even some, I guess, innocent people as well. Probably, you know, women and children and stuff like that. And apparently... That started a huge, huge uproar from the human community to get rid of all the mutants. So that's why I assume Matthew McFadden is saying that this is the worst Wolverine. This is a very well-acted and sad moment. And I truly think that she was a bit genuine about it. I'm not saying that she's right and everything. I'm just saying I actually believed her. That she might want to have helped Wolverine out in this moment. Obviously, use him as a weapon later on, but I think she generally cared about him in that moment. But of course, Wolverine was just doing this to buy time as 23 got the severed head helmet of Juggernaut and Deadpool puts it on her head. Now we have a Mexican standoff because Cassandra cannot send them back to their world as long as she's wearing the helmet and she says, I'm gonna kill you as soon as the helmet's off my head. So like I said, we have a hell of a Mexican standoff here, but thankfully the plot convenience, sorry, Pyro comes in out of nowhere and shoots Cassandra. So now she has to promise them that she will not kill them if they remove her helmet so she can heal herself. And then she decides to open up a portal for them so they can go out and save Deadpool's universe. And as they jump into the portal, Eliot sucks up everything and literally kills the rest of their team. They just... Don't even think twice about trying to save them. Just jump into the portal. We got our own thing to do. Again, remember that they're all dead for later on. Somehow they make their way back to the TVA headquarters, but a portal opens up and Cassandra takes Matthew McFadden, the most bland human being of all human history, as a hostage to go destroy the universe. I have no idea why. Just, it's so bad. It's such, it's so bad, people. I'm sorry. Moving on. 
Now we get a semi-final fight though. Wolverine and Deadpool. Oh, actually for some odd reason another portal opens up and Nice Pool and Dog Pool show up. And they're fighting the horrors of a hundred Deadpool variants. Before the fight, we get a never-ending joke of Deadpool using Nice Pool as a human shield to take a thousand bullets. Obviously, you know, Deadpool can heal himself, but Nice Pool can't. But the scene is worth it so we can get his golden guns. Remember that from before? Wolverine puts on his iconic mask, and they fight the hundred Deadpools, which are essentially one-shot grunts. They tear through them in a very long, cool scene, but it is kind of weird that they don't fight back at all. And as they all fall dead, they decide now is the time to regenerate, and the duo is screwed, but thankfully, Peter, Deadpool's co-worker and the guy from the second movie, shows up as Peter Pool, and all the Deadpools fawn over him, and they just leave them to go save the universe. Do I have to say it again? I'll wait till later. Now Cassandra is using the machine to destroy all universes, but conveniently it takes a few minutes to charge up though. This is how you destroy the electronic machine that's powered by electricity that you could probably use a bomb or your, I don't know, adamantium claws or swords to destroy it. No, 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 no. You have to break the machine and connect the two cords with your body. So you have to hold on to one and then hold on to the other and that connects the circuit and it blows up to the machine which Matthew McFadden informs them that hey it's gonna kill you it's a molecular thing there's no way you could survive that but thankfully because it's Deadpool and Wolverine they hold hands similar to that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where Peter was holding on to the stone and the other uh, Guardians came up held his hand and took away I don't know some of the, the power from it. That's how they survived and defeated Cassandra, and the, and the day is saved. That's how it happens. And then Matthew McFadden gets arrested by the diversity hire from the Loki TV show, and, um, yeah, Deadpool invites Wolverine to live at his house, and that's the movie. I guess him and Vanessa somehow get back together? Oh, and also X-23 is sitting at the dinner table. Yes, X-23 that died when Eliot sucked everything dry is alive somehow and that's the movie folks the mcu is back from what i'm reading online this might be bottom tier mcu movie for me i don't think i've seen this many plot conveniences in one movie before and like i predicted accurately the bulk of this movie's appeal is the cameos Oh, really quickly, before we end this, the, the after credit scene of this. Remember there was that scene before I was telling you about where um, Deadpool was ranting and rattling off all the things that Johnny Storm said about Cassandra, and he was like, oh, no, no, I didn't say any of this stuff, please, I didn't say anything, he's lying. Well, the scene is Deadpool looking through a TV at a scene where Johnny Storm did say everything that Deadpool repeated, so he wasn't lying. And, and, and that's... And that's the after credits scene, people. Thanks for watching. That's my review of Deadpool 3. Let me know what you think about that.